thank you for joining us this evening for our voter education empowerment series. We are serious about voting. We are serious about this election. We are serious about the debt we owe to our ancestors who died, who fought, who marched so that we could have this right to vote. So today you're going to hear from some phenomenal panelists. You're going to learn everything you need to know to make sure that not only do you vote, how you're going to vote, and that your vote counts. So tune in and tell someone to go live, share us on your Facebook page, send your questions to our chat, and we want to just be here to answer all of the questions you have today. So with us today, we have the opportunity You're muted, Sister Show. Cannot, no. Greetings. On behalf of New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, we welcome you. And we are going to now introduce Reverend Frederica Sneed, who is going to come to us. She's native of Maryland, our second Episcopal district. She's gonna bring a word of greetings and she is going to um, bring move us forward in our agenda. Thank you, Sister uh, Dozier. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Greetings to this wonderful panel and to all the viewers in this voter information forum. We thank our pastor, Will Thomas, for this opportunity to serve our community for this critical time and to ensure that each registered voter gets out and votes by all means possible. For me, I am a first time Georgia uh, resident and will be voting for the first time. And I would say that education is the key in being informed, whether you're voting, early voting, uh, uh, voting by mail or going to the polls, education is certainly the key. And we are here to provide that information to ensure that you get the information that you need and that you can correctly vote, uh, whether it's electronic, mail-in, or going to the polls. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I thank you so much. So let us open in a prayer uh, as we move forward in this uh, information forum. Let us pray. To the Most High who looks down upon us, the only one who knows the end from the beginning, Father in heaven, I ask right now, please watch over our nation during the election time. Glorious Father, I put this nation into your able hands during this election. Protect us from the schemes of the devil that disrupt peace and bring violence among ourselves. Cover us with the mighty blood of your son, Jesus the Christ, that no harm comes to us. Mighty God, let peace be our shield. Let the church help in preaching peace and harmony among the people of this nation. Let the church be leaders in the voter education empowerment ser series. Let the media give positive influence that promotes togetherness when choosing our leaders. Lord, we count on you. Let your Holy Spirit guide. There are different candidates with different ambitions, but Lord, give us your spirit of discernment to know their real motives for wanting leadership. Help us as citizens to be obedient, to do all things in proper and decent order. Lord, we ask this prayer and we lift it up in the, in the righteous name of your son, Jesus, that we pray, amen. Amen. Amen, and thank you so much. 
We have a lot of information and a lot of good news that we want to share with you today. And I want to just double check. I think we're going to see um, we're going to see a clip and I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Anybody who is on, I need you to mute unless you're speaking. So Mr. Douglas, if you'll mute for us, um, everybody mute. And um, following, I think we're ready to go with our short video. Go right ahead. Michael, Tina Carmichael, Randy Burkhead, Christopher Carter, Edward Brown. I couldn't vote. I was purged off the roads. I was highly upset about it. I want to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Mom, I don't want to hear about Selma anymore. We can actually go and vote. So I thought. So I thought. Oh, there's a plan. Oh, there's definitely a plan. People will go to great lengths to keep people from being free. Whoever this guy is has challenged my right to vote. It's about time we turn the lights on in the kitchen and start cleaning the cockroaches out of here. Sheriff wanted him to take the strings. He pretty much knew that he wasn't supposed to vote. It was just catch me if you can or ha ha ha. They say that I use somebody's identity for voting. I'm not guilty. When we think something like voting rights is something everybody believes and that progress only goes in one direction, we've seen sudden reverses. We've seen that history can go in the wrong direction. There is a temptation for the majority to restrict voting rights of the minority because it helps them stay in power. So we're having a few technical difficulties with continuing that video. So I am going to introduce our first speaker who is going to address the issues that you saw in that trailer. Attorney Gina Smith Mangdom is well known in DeKalb County as an attorney, a, a entrepreneur and a community advocate. She currently is the chair of East DeKalb Community Coalition. She has been active, I know for the 25 plus years I've been in DeKalb County. I always see her name, I see her voice, I hear her voice and she's always advocating for those who are vulnerable and for those who need that, that voice to help them to get justice. She has been a member of New Bethel Amy Church since 1995, we joined the same year where she serves in several ministries and you can hear her wonderful voice in the choir any Sunday that you're there when we get back to church. But and she has been the former chair of the Social Action Commission, doing just what we're doing today, helping to get out the vote. So today, uh, an, a graduate of John Marshall Law School, she has a practice that specializes in wills, trusts, estate, and elder law. We want to support our sister entrepreneur. But today, Attorney Mangnum, please tell us why in 2020 do we still have voter suppression? Why are we fighting for the rights? that our ancestors fought for over a hundred years ago. Why in this democracy are we still fighting for the right to vote? Attorney Gina. Thank you, Cheryl. And it's always good to work with you um, and always good to talk about voter rights and just reminding folks that we've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go again. So many know the history and unfortunately voter suppression looked like counting uh, jelly beans in a jar years ago, but now it's just a bit more sophisticated, but every bit as challenging. So I'd like to start by talking about voter suppression and really what it means. So I'm wondering if you had the slides. 
Or should I just talk? Stand up then and give us your name, please. Brandy Burkhead. Jamie. Okay, sir. Sure. John Keith. There you go. Well, North Carolina has a provision where a citizen can challenge the right of another citizen to vote. It's been on the books forever. Who else is going to know who's registered to vote unless another citizen does it? Some of the laws that wind up being discriminatory today had discriminatory intent when they were first written in the early 1900s as part of the Jim Crow laws. For example, voter purging laws to cleanse the rolls. And this was typically used in the Jim Crow area by whites who were trying to prevent newly enfranchised African Americans from having access to the ballot box. Michael's methodology involves finding voters that the state identified as inactive. These people have missed two federal elections, so they were listed as inactive. And I started sending letters to these inactive voters on the Cumberland County voter rolls. The ones that came back marked by the post office as undeliverable are considered evidence that the voter no longer resides at that address. And Mike challenged those voters. Voter challenge envelopes were marked, do not forward. If a resident moves in the district, even across the street, he or she will not receive the notice their registration is being challenged, or even know to come to the Board of Elections hearing to contest the challenge. What the letter essentially says to Purim to maintain my voter registration uh, as it is currently today. Whoever this guy is. All right. <laughs> So that video introduces just what I'm talking about. But the key here is to understand that voter suppression is a strategy and a tactic to keep us from voting. So may, though we may be frustrated at the polls, we need to understand it's by design and there are many ways that it presents itself and we need to just continue to force our way to exercise our right to vote. Next slide, Tony. So as I mentioned, voter suppression comes in many forms. We just heard about it. Uh, Georgia has one of the shortest uh, registration deadlines in the country. So you must register to vote at least 29 days before the election, and that date has already passed. So if you have not registered to vote, this is not helpful, but maybe so in the future. Purging people from the official polls is also a way to keep people from voting. If you have not voted in the last three elections, and that could be a special election that you didn't know about, a runoff, then you can actually be purged from the polls and think you were registered to vote. And then you get to the poll and find out that you're not. So in order to, if you haven't voted, you really need to under, uh, make sure that you have not been purged from the poll or from the list and re-register. And finally, there are certain statuses. This is certainly not an all-inclusive list, but for instance, if you're a convicted felon, then you are not even eligible to vote. If in fact you are registered, you, there is still more forms of suppression. Uh, there's a requirement that you present a state issued ID. That means uh, if you have a driver's license, that's good. But if you don't have a driver's license, it presents challenges if you do not have a state issued ID card. That has been something that's been put in place in the last few years that limits many people. Although we take it for granted that we drive and that we have these things, many people, especially in rural communities, do not. Um, secondly, your name and address must, must match uh, your voter registration card. So if you've changed your address, again, um, the deadline has passed now, but it must match your voter registration card. So your name, address, and signature must match. Now, I know I signed my voter registration card many years ago, and I'm not even sure if my signature would match now, but that's just something to keep in mind. Again, it's another form of suppression. Uh, absentee ballots could take a whole presentation, especially in the era we're in now. 
So basically, many of us have requested a ballot. Many people have received them, but if you have not requested your or not received your ballot that you requested, then you certainly need to go ahead, go into the poll, and vote. Uh, you can follow up and try to get an absentee ballot, but if you don't get one, you can still vote at the poll. Um, the other thing is, if you have gotten your voter uh, absentee ballot, then it must be received by election day. It's not enough to have it postmarked. It's not enough to uh, just think that it's going to get there. So you need to fill it out, mail it in as soon as you can. And in fact, I would suggest that you drop it at the many boxes that are now being made available. DeKalb County has just been uh, given four point eight million dollars to improve our voter process. And so one of the things that's happening is that there will be boxes where you can drop your uh, ballot rather than mail it in. And I'm sure uh, Michael Walker will talk about where those locations are and how you can do that. Uh, improperly marking the ballot. It's just like back in school, for those of you who remember, you have to fill in the circle fully uh, you don't want your ballot thrown out because it was improperly marked. Um, if you remember in 2000, the famous hanging hanging uh, chads in the ballots. And that was because people did not vote accordingly because they did not do it properly. Now, again, you just need to make sure that you follow the instructions and make sure that the ballot is properly marked. Now, if you decide that you can't vote absentee, you can still go in in person. You just need to sign an affidavit, tell them that you now want to vote in person, and you can go ahead and vote. So if anything goes wrong with your absentee ballot, you can still vote. There have been many changes uh, because of COVID and also this year because all of the litigation around the craziness that has happened in the past in Georgia, we've had a lot of changes in the voting process. I don't know if any of you remember, but we were on CNN actually nationally because of the big mess we had with the primary. There were lots of lines, precincts were closed, my precinct was actually um, uh, folded into another. Luckily, I voted absentee, but many of the precincts have changed. So I, I really stress, find out where your precinct is. You can sign on to the election website for DeKalb. Find out before you leave the house where your precinct is, because many precincts have changed. Um, there's a shortage on workers, so there's been long lines. Uh, they even expect long lines in early voting. And then, of course, to add to the madness, we have new voting equipment this year. Uh, people need to be trained. Again, we have COVID and there were some equipment malfunctions. And so that precluded people from voting. So. How do you make your vote count? Stand firm. The thing is, you do have a right to vote and a lot of people get frustrated just because they're going through all of these things. But if you understand, again, that this is a strategy and a tactic to prevent you from voting, then you need to do everything you can to make your vote count. The key is to allow sufficient time, whether that be in absentee voting, to mail it in, drop it in a ballot, don't wait till the last minute. If you go in person, if you want an early vote, go early. If you vote on election day, and some people like to do that, you must allow sufficient time because there will certainly be lines. If you vote in person, um, you also need to understand that if you have to leave, maybe you need to go back home, maybe you need to get to your job, Ask that you be allowed to go to the front of the line when you come back. Talk to the poll workers. They're very reasonable, Michael. And um, also, if there, you have some kind of infirmity or 
uh, disability, you can also be asked to go to the front of the line. State your case. When people tell you you can't vote, you tell them why you can. This is your right. Don't just let somebody tell you that you cannot vote. You need to state your case based on the information that you've been given today and exercise your right to vote. And finally, if all else fails, request a provisional ballot. You can get a provisional ballot if some of these things like your name, address, uh, signature, don't come, uh, don't all come together, then with a provisional ballot, you can at least vote. And then after these things are checked, presumably, your provisional ballot may count. But that's the, the last and final step. And finally, after all of this, voter suppression can be extremely frustrating. And that's the whole idea, to frustrate you into not voting. In fact, probably the most effective measure of voter suppression is making people think it doesn't matter whether they vote at all. And so that's why it's really important to vote. Keep the faith. If you believe your vote doesn't count, then you have nothing to lose by voting and at least the possibility of something to gain. And my final quote, that I use all of the time is for evil to triumph, it only takes good people to do nothing. So in spite of all of these factors, in spite of everything that's being done to keep us from voting, we must continue to strive to exercise our right to vote and be counted regardless of the outcome because God is still in control in spite of all of these things that the world puts in front of us. Thank you, Attorney Gina. You gave us such wonderful information. And the, I think the most important is just be intentional, be deliberate, to be intrusive. This is your right. And Brother Michael Walker is going to assure that you know all of the kind of methods and what you need to do because he is well-versed in this area. While he has been retired for a number of years from his professional career, um, and he's a very active member at New Bethel Amy Church where he serves as the president of the lay organization. He has worked with the DeKalb Board of Elections and Registration in various positions for over 18 years. Um, at the New Bethel Precinct, the Rock Chapel Precinct, he's currently the manager of the Rock Chapel Road Precinct and manager of the Berean Early Voting Precinct. He has worked early voting throughout the cab for the past five years. And I asked him when we had our meeting this week, so what does that mean? I mean, do you work a few hours a day? And he says, well, we have to be there at 5.30 a.m. for the polls to open at six. And because he is that supervisor and he has to be there until it closes. So you're talking about someone who's for, who has been putting in the time for early voting that was taking place in Atlanta for the, for the congressional seat. And now he is going to be on until after election. So Brother Michael, you heard a number of things that Attorney Gina has already shared. You've seen some of this happen. Just begin to walk us through some of the challenges and some of the ways that we can overcome these challenges. Well, thank you, Sister uh, Cheryl. Uh, of course, there are many challenges uh, to suppress your vote. Uh, you have the opportunity to, to vote and you should and must exercise this opportunity. You can early vote, you can vote by absentee, and you can vote on election day. What I'm gonna do is talk about, uh, give you the locations where you can uh, drop off your absentee ballots in the various drop boxes for both DeKalb, Gwinnett, and Rockdale counties. I'm going to give you the locations for early voting in these three counties. And then I'm going to talk about provisional voting. So if you, Brother Tony, will put up the slides. Okay, in, in DeKalb County, there are uh, quite a few locations that you can drop off your, uh, your absentee ballot in drop boxes. And this is probably a lot more convenient and uh, 
helpful in, ter in, in, in view of the problems we are having with the uh, US Postal Service. So my recommendation to you is that you drop off your ballots into one of these drop boxes by election day, which is November 3rd and no later than 7 p.m. In the cab, there is the Brook Brookhaven City Hall, uh, the County Line El El Ellenwood Library, the Sterling Cantler, Sterling at Cantler Village, the Voter Registration Election Office on Memorial Drive, Exchange Park on Columbia Drive, Stonecrest City Hall, Stone Mountain City Hall, Dunwoody City Hall, Doraville City Hall, Tucker City Hall, Toco Hills, Avis D. Williams Library, the Tucker Reed H. Coffer Library, the Clarkston Library, next slide, and uh, West, Wesley Chapel, William C. Brown Library on Wesley Chapel Road, the Decatur City Hall, and the Lou Walker Senior Center. And after Thursday, October 8th, you have the Wade Walker Family YCM, YMCA, which is on Rock Ridge Road, the Cab County Fire Station, number 25, which is at on Rock Ridge, Rock Ridge Road, the Clarkson City Hall on Church Street, the Salem Panola Library on Salem Road, the DeKalb County Library, Gresham Branch on Gresham Road, and the Redan Trotty Library, which is on Wellborn Road. Uh, in Gwinnett County, In Gwinnett, in Gwinnett County, there are quite a few locations. And do each county have these? I know we're waiting for something to come up. Do each county have locations that they, they will be able to find this list somewhere, Brother Michael? Yes, you can uh, you can find it on the voter registration, the CAB voter registration website. Uh, uh, the Gwinnett County web, uh, voter registration web, website, as well as the Rock Chapel, excuse me, Rockdale County website. Okay, the Gwinnett Rock box locations. In Beaufort, you have two, the Bogan Park Community Recreation Center, the Beaufort Sugar Hill Branch Library. In Dakula, you have the Kula Park Activity Building, the Kula Branch Library, Hamilton Mill Branch Library. In Duluth, you have Shorty Howell Park Activity Building, Duluth Branch Library. In Grayson, you have the Grayson Branch Library. Lawrenceville, you have the Collins Hill Branch Library, Five Forks Branch Library, and the Lawrenceville Branch Library. Next slide. And excuse me. Can someone drop that off for you? Um, technically, technically, only a family member or a person that is that is your caregiver can drop those off for you. Okay. All right. Uh, in Lebanon, you have the Lebanon Branch Library and the Mountain Park Branch Library. In Norcross. You have the Lucky Shoals Park Community Recreation Center, the Norcross Branch Library. In Peachtree Corners, you have the Peachtree Corners Branch Library. Snellville, Lenore Park Gym, the Centerville Branch Library, the 
Snellville Brass Library. And in Stone Mountain, you have the Mountain Park Aquatic Center. In Swanee, you have the George Pierce Park Community Recreation Center and the Swanee Branch Library. Uh, and finally, in Rockdale County, you only have one location, and uh, that location is uh, the 1400 Park Road um, uh, and, uh, 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 excuse me, the 1400 Park Road is your early voting location and your drop box location in Rockdale County is the Board of Elections and Voter Registration at 1261 Commercial Drive, Southwest Suite B, in Congress, Georgia. As far as uh, early voting, early voting begins on Monday, uh, October 12th, and it runs through Friday, October 30th. In the cab, there are approximately 13 early voting locations. Uh, those, and if you would show Tony the DeKalb early voting locations, Okay, the main office, which is the Voter Registration and Election Office on Memorial Drive, and all of these locations will be open every day from the 12th of, of October through the 30th on both Saturday and Sunday. On, on weekdays, those offices uh, voting early voting locations will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Saturdays, they will be open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And on Sundays, from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. You have the main office. You have in Atlanta, the Corn Recreation Center on Woodbine Avenue. In Brookhaven, you have Linwood Recreation Center on Osborne Road. In Shambly, you have the Core 4 Atlanta on Will, Will Ross Road. In Decatur, you can vote at Agnes Scott College, Mary Brown Bullock Science Center on College Avenue. In East Cab, you have Berean Christian Church. The Lee Family Life Center on Young Road. In Ellenwood, you have the County Ellenwood Library on River Road. In North DeKalb, you have the Dunwoody, Li Dunwoody Library. South DeKalb, you have the Gallery at South DeKalb, which is on Cantler Road. And also in South DeKalb, you have the House of Hope Atlanta. H.F. Shepherd Complex on Flat Shoals Road. Stonecrest, they will be voting in the former, former Sam's Club building on Turner Hill Road. And in Tucker, you have the Reed H. Coffer Library on La Vista Road. And Gwinnett, County, you have nine voter locations. You have the Gwinnett Voter Registration Election uh, Elections Beauty P. Baldwin Building on Grayson Highway. We have the Bogan Park Community Recreation Center on Bogan Road, Lenora Park Gym on Lenora 
Church Road, the Cooler Park Activity Building on Old Auburn Road, the Lucky Shoals Park on Britt Road, the George Pierce Park Community Recreation Center in Buford, in Swanee, on Buford Highway, the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds on Sugarloaf Parkway, the Mountain Park Activity Building on Rockbridge Road, and the Shorty Howe Park Recreation Center on Pleasant Hill Road. Now, Sister Mangum discussed the, the, the option of voting provisionally at the, at the polls. So Tony, if you would put up the provisional voting slides. Now provisional voting gives you an opportunity to vote, but not on the voting equipment. And in this case, there are many reasons why uh, you may not be able to vote on the equipment. And what I will identify here are the types of provisional ballots or the reasons for, for voting provisionally. But you, you do not have to leave the voting precinct without voting, either by machine or provisionally. Now, once you vote provisionally, you can check to verify whether or not your vote was counted, either by calling the election office or by checking uh, on my voter page. And in addition, once you vote provisionally, you will be handed a, a slip of paper that gives you the information that you need to follow checking on the validity of your provisional vote. Okay. Provisional ballots. The types of provisional ballots are uh, if you come to a precinct and it is not your assigned precinct. And uh, when you check in, they do not, they, it they, the, the person who checks you in tells you that you are not at your assigned precinct. You do not have to go to your assigned precinct. You can vote provisionally. Uh, you can vote provisionally if you are not registered in the county. Uh, voter registration, you can vote provisionally if you registered by mail for the first time, but you did not provide required ID and you do not have that ID with you at the time that you come to vote. You will be required, you, you will do a provisional ballot and you will bring that identification to the voter registration office and your vote will be counted. You can vote provisionally if you do not have any ID, ID with you. Uh, you can vote provisionally if a voter has, if you are considered a challenged voter and you have not uh, gone through the appeal process. So uh, what you would do then is uh, you would fill out a provisional ballot. You can vote provisionally if you are marked as a potential non-citizen and you do not have proof of citizenship documentation with you. And you can vote provisionally if you are if you are shown pending because your voter registration was incomplete, and as I indicated, after the, after you have voted, after you have cast your provisional ballot, 
you have provided written contact information so that you will be able to determine whether the ballot will be counted. And if not counted, the reason why your ballot was not counted. And as I indicated, this information is also available on my voter page. Oh, here we are, okay. And as I indicated, here are the reasons again. Voter is not in his or her assigned precinct. Voter is not registered in the county. The voter uh, registered by mail for the first time, but did not provide required ID and does not have an ID. The voter who does not have, a, have one of the required forms of voter ID, but you are a registered voter, and if a voter has been challenged and appears at the poll to vote prior to the challenge hearing or the decision, you can vote uh, provisionally. And the next slide. And if the voter is marked as a potential non-citizen and does not have proof of citizenship document with them. And if a voter is pending due to incomplete voter registration information. And after the voter has cast his provisional ballot, the voter is provided written contact information so that the voter will be able to determine whether the ballot was counted, and if not counted, the reason why the ballot was not counted. And as I indicated, this information is also available on my voter page. And just as a reminder, as we indicated in, in last week's presentation, uh, you can uh, you can get information on whether or not your absentee ballot has been received and counted on the My Voter page, or as well as uh, on the Georgia uh, voter tracking website. So, Sister Dozier, this is all that I have for you this evening. And I'm available for any questions. All right, very good. And I think you gave lots of information. We know where we have where we can go to vote. There should be no excuse. But just in case we want to find out how to do this and check on our ballots, Sister Marlene Taylor Crawford, who is a phenomenal, phenomenal community um, advocate as well. She is an educator. She is unwavering about her commitment to serve. She pursues her passion in education, civic engagement, and advocacy for homeless children, social justice, political action, and the preservation of African-American history and culture. She is currently the president of the United Ebony Society of Gwinnett County. She has been the chair of the Social Action Commission here at New Bethel AME Church, and she serves on many boards and auxiliaries in Gwinnett County. So her goal is to make sure that the grass gets out there in the, in the grassroots and protect the rights of voting for everyone, especially vulnerable population. So Sister Marlene Taylor Crawford, what do you have to share today? Thank you, know before you go. Know before you go. Amen. And that is so important. So this evening, I'm going to highlight a few resources for you to be aware of so that when you go to the polls or when you um, turn in your absentee ballot, you will be very informed what to do and what not to do. And I would like to thank the previous presenters because they highlight, excuse me, highlighted a lot of information that I'm going to add to, so thank you so much. So let's start with the, apps, um, the sample ballot. So I'll have that pull up. And what I'm going to um, have you see first is what's called the consolidated ballot. Actually, you will not have this ballot, but this ballot I'm going to show you is from Gwinnett County and you can access ballot information on your county's voter registration and elections website. So I'm just waiting for our tech person to pull up the consolidated ballot and it has a listing of all the possible races that are in place for the county. Now, depending on 
where you live in the county, your ballot would be different. It's going to be different because of the different districts. But I do want to highlight um, Gwinnett County, the consolidated ballot, and then you will see the sample ballot. Okay, so the, okay, so this one is a consolidated ballot. So if you scroll down, you'll see the different races, president. Okay, public service commissioner. Scroll all the way down, thank you, keep on going. And once again, this will have all the possible candidates, races that will be on the, different, on the ballot for your county. So this one happens to be for Gwinnett County. So if you scroll all the way down, I do want to highlight that there are going to be amendments and referendums on the ballot. So across the state of Georgia, there are going to be two amendments to the Georgia State Constitution. And then there's going to be a third um, statewide referendum. And your answer will be yes or no. And last week, um, Representative Karen Bennett went over the referendums and the amendments. But in addition to that, depending on the county that you live in, there will be additional referendums on the ballot. So in Gwinnett County, there's going to be a splash, um, splash referendum, which is special local option sales tax. And below that will be a transit referendum. So once again, you check either yes or no. So statewide, let me just um, do a recap of that. So statewide, there's going to be three measures that are all for all Georgia voters we'll see on the ballot. Two of them are amendments to the Georgia State Constitution and one is a statewide referendum. But in addition to that, depending on the county that you live in, there will be additional referendums. So in Gwinnett County, there's going to be a sloth and there's also going to be the transit referendum. So make sure you're aware of this and you, um, you research what it's all about. So at this time, I'm going to have you see a sample ballot. So this, okay, so this is the sample ballot. So this is what it's going to look like. Once again, be very clear about what you should do and what you should not do when it comes to filling it out. And that information was um, discussed earlier. But if you scroll down, you will see the different races, state, um, national, of course, and then statewide. And then depending on where you live in the county, you're going to see particular races. And let me give you an example. So depending on where you live in Gwinnett County, you're going to see um, a race for school board and that will be for um, districts one, three, and five. If you do not see that on your ballot, that means that you do not live within that district. And I think that gets really confusing. Sometimes people go to the polls and they're like, well, I did not see that on my ballot. That's because that particular race or candidate is not in your district. So that's really important to understand. And if, if you scroll all the way down, you will see the um, amendments and you will also see the, you will also see the referendums that I mentioned before. An excellent place to get um, this information. Of course, once again, as I stated before, will be the voter registration um, an election office webpage for your county. And then I'm also going to highlight another resource. So before I finish discussing the sample ballot in Gwinnett County, I also want to tell you that Gwinnett County has Spanish on the ballot. And this is because of section 203 in the Voting Rights Act, the language provisions, so the ballot in Gwinnett County is longer because it is in Spanish as well. And it is the only county in Georgia that has 
um, Spanish language on the ballot. Okay, so let's go to the My Voter page, another resource. Know before you go. I'm going to say that a few times before the night is over. So where else can you go be besides your local Board of Re um, Voter Registration and Elections website? You can go to the Secretary of State's My Voter page. So mvp.sos.ga.gov. And on this page, there's a wealth of information. So you can actually go on this page for voter registration and also to, to register to vote and also to check your voter registration status. Now we know that the deadline has passed to vote in the election November 3rd. However, this would be the site that you can go on to register to vote. Also, you can check where your precinct is. So on the day, so during early voting, you can go to any um, location within your county. However, on election day, you must go to your precinct. And that um, I've, I have been a poll watcher several times and it really hurts my heart when it is quarter to seven and people find out, okay, I'm at the wrong precinct. And as brother Michael stated before, then you would have to get a provisional ballot. So to avoid all of that from happening, go on this website to see where your polling location is. So you'll know exactly where to go the day of election. Also, you can see the early voting locations, but just to be on the safe side, I would also go on the, your um, county's website to make sure that no additional early voting locations are there that's not located on this is good to cross-reference. And also you want to make sure that you are aware of the times too, because not all counties have the same times for the early voting. So that's really important. And not necessarily all will be on Saturdays, every Saturday and every Sunday. Also, you can see um, the elected officials, you will know the status of your absentee ballot, when was it mailed, what's going on, because that is um, definitely a question people will have. I have not received my absentee ballot. I'm not too sure what's happening. You can check the status of that on this page. You can check your voter registration status to ensure that you are not purged from the poll. Now we know, as Sister Gina stated, that is a form of voter suppression. So you want to make sure that when you go to your correct precinct, that there's no problems with your name being on the roll. So when you log on to the home page of my voter page, you will put your first initial, your last name, your county, and your date of birth and hit submit. You can also see your sample ballot so you will know exactly what your ballot is going to look like. You can also, um, as Brother Michael stated earlier, you can check the status of your provisional ballot. So if you were in a situation where you had to vote, vote provisionally, you can check the status of that. And um, you can see below not registered to vote, you can register in key election date. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is, I stated before, am I registered to vote? Checking your status, I want to register to vote. Next slide. Also, it's really important to know, and this was stated earlier, the forms of ID that's required. That's another form of voter um, suppression. We know that some states make it quite um, more difficult when it comes to having certain forms of ID. So make sure you check the listing of what is acceptable. And this is really important as well for um, college students. So let's take a look at, also there's an app that you can download. So if you feel more comfortable using the app, there is an app. And I do want to emphasize that it's really important 
if you know someone that is not tech savvy, for, or they do not have access to technology, that you please assist them to make sure that they are informed. Because not everyone, we, we're definitely not going to take it for granted that everyone knows how to navigate this website or they have access to getting on the website. So please help someone to get this information. Next, please. And these are some other um, references or uh, resources that are available. Next slide. So there was actually um, our tech person, um, Brother Tony, if you can pull up the other PowerPoint, the latest one that I sent, because there are some resources that were uh, that was provided in that particular PowerPoint, such as my voter page, the um, website information, I will vote, also some um, voter um, hotline numbers. So if you go to the poll and there's a problem, there are different organizations that are there to help. Attorneys are manning the phones, yes. And they will provide you with assistance so one is, um, these are some statewide numbers, the Georgia Voter Protection Hotline number, 1-888-7305816. The ACLU, 1-866-687-8683. Now, as far as resources, as I stated earlier, going on your county's voter registration and election office to see exactly your voting locations, absentee um, drop boxes, the locations for that. In Gwinnett County, the libraries in DeKalb and other counties, you can go to a library where there's a drop box located. My voter page that I went over earlier. Um, and there's a lot of organizations that are on the for forefront to ensure voter protection, such as the Georgia Coalition for the People's Agenda, Fair Fight, and I Will Vote. And I just wanna go over some other um, things that you should be aware of. Of course, when you go to the polls or you're going to drop off your um, absentee ballot, make sure you wear your um, face mask and Go with your hand sanitizer. We wanna make sure everyone stays safe and healthy. Also, if you are elderly, 75 years or older, you do not have to wait in the line. Please let a poll official know and you will be escorted to the front of the line or also if you are disabled. And another form of voter suppression that people are very concerned about is um, people who are saying that they are so-called poll watchers and they are going to the polls with the purpose of intimidating others. Now, in order for someone to be a poll watcher, there is a process. You cannot just show up the day of and say that I'm a poll watcher. You have to represent one of the parties or if the, the candidate is independent, you have to represent that candidate. You have to go through a training. You, you have to have ID, a badge that you wear that's provided by the Board of Election for the county that you're a poll watcher in. So no one can just show up and say that they are a poll watcher. So if, and the reason why this is being said, it is a form of intimidation. And many people are fearful of going to the polls, or some people I should say, because of voter intimidation. Please make sure you know what your rights are, have had that voter registration, um, voter protection hotline number available. There are people that are there to help you. Now the poll watcher is not allowed to speak with you inside, but the poll watcher can walk out and walk a certain feet away away from the area that, the, and go to the same area where campaign is, campaigning is allowed and speak with, with you there. So you certainly should not go to the polls and feel as though you cannot get any help if there's a problem. So I hope that I was um, as clear as possible right now for you to understand what your rights are 
and you know that you have the right to vote and we want to ensure that your right is protected. I would like to add just one thing and that is on the, on the ID side, you can have an expired Georgia driver's license. It doesn't have to be current. Yes, thank you. Very good information to know because that's usually a, a, a place that you see a lot of problems with voter um, suppression with the ID. Well, this has definitely been very valuable information. And I don't know if we have any questions from our um, audience that we have. But I, I just, a, a couple of questions that we've had and over the past week, I've sent some questions to Brother Michael um, in order to make sure that the people are receiving they're, they're, who have listened to us over the past few weeks. When we, you talked about a provisional ballot, what if they don't have all of the requirements for the provisional ballot, Brother Michael? Um, what, what are the options if it's on the day of? And I'm sure that's why you're encouraging people to do early voting so they have um, a better chance than if they just show up late, as Sister Marlene said, on the day of. But what if they don't have all of those requirements? Uh, you should never leave the voting precinct without voting, either on the machines or provisionally. So, Provisional voting is available both in early voting and in um, the election day. Uh, if you do not have any of the proper identification, if you're in the wrong precinct, even if you come in the morning and, and they tell you you're in the wrong precinct and you don't, you don't have time to drive or you don't want to drive to your precinct, you can vote provisionally. So you, a person should never leave a polling location without voting either via machine or through provisional voting. Okay, that's, that's very, very helpful. And if I could add to that, um, Sister Please. Cheryl, if you show up at a um, polling location and the polls does not open on time or if you walk in and then there's problems with the machine, please make sure you report that. That is very important because many times the polls have to be open beyond 7 p.m. because of problems like that. And that has to be through a court order. So all of that has to be reported. Great, I was going to ask that. Brother Michael, you, you mentioned, no, Sister Marlene, you mentioned that if someone is over 75 of their disabled, they don't have to wait in line. But what if when they arrive, it's already a line? How do they go and find, Brother Michael might answer that part, how do you find the, somebody or how do you find the person to say that I need to, you know, can I come in? Can I get in um, when, you know, people are gonna say you can't jump the line and, you know, what should they do? Well, they, they should try to contact uh, the poll manager or any poll person for that matter and let them know that they are disabled or that they are 75 or older and they will be taken to the front of the line. So, and there should be poll workers throughout uh, the voting process helping you at, when you come into the po uh, voting center or uh, uh, even outside if there's a line. Okay. And maybe what that person can do if they're, if they're with someone, that person that they're with can just walk up and um, let other people know, you know, a poll official know exactly what's going on and maybe someone that's already on the line, a few people that's on the line, someone might be willing to assist them to go and let let the poll official know that this person is here and then they could just get back on the line. But of course, tell people next to them, there's an elderly person, I want to assist her. I need to step off this line and just go get some help and I'm coming right back to my space. So we all need to help each other out. Sounds good. We have a question. Um, Sister Yvette is asking, she says, um, she puts the names of the candidates she wants to vote for. You know, there's lots of information you had on that voter page, Sister Marlene. 
and not everybody's gonna remember who they wanna vote for. And then there's the referendums and the bills. So the way that most of us operate is we put everything on our phone. That's what we do. My shopping list is on my phone. Everything I need to know is on my phone. So um, I think brother Michael, you told me you could bring paper in but you can't open your phone. Will you tell right. me what yeah. other options are they are there if you get there and this is where you have it. Can you look at your phone and write it on a piece of paper when you when you arrive? Um, give us some suggestions. Well, if, if, if you have it on your phone, you are not allowed to use your phone inside of the precinct. So you will have to go outside of the uh, precinct area and you can write that information on uh, a piece of paper or they are usually uh, sample ballots in the precinct. You can get a sample ballot and mark that sample ballot and take that in as your source for information. So, uh, and another option would be to actually print that sample ballot uh, from my voter page and mark it versus putting that information on your cell phone or, or your uh, uh, iPad or whatever uh, to, to, and bring the, that into the, vote, uh, into the voting precinct. But you are not allowed to, to use or have a cell phone or any of the attachments like ear fobs or, or whatever in the uh, voting precinct. But, and then for, you mentioned that there is Spanish and English in Gwinnett County. And so if there's other languages that, and we have lots of diverse, a wonderfully globally diverse community throughout Georgia, persons would have to bring their own translators. Can they go with them to the booth if they need somebody to translate? You did talk about translating or helping. Can they, they can walk right up to the booth with them? There, yes, they can, but Brother Michael can talk more about that. Okay. If, if you need assistance, have that person, when you check in to the voting precinct, have that person with you because that information must be uh, inputted into the voter system showing that you are, you are assisting that voter. And by doing that, you will be able to actually go to the voting booth assist the voter with voting. So, so Brother Michael, this is Reverend Sneed. I do have a question. And that is uh, some people may feel discouraged because they have maybe a hearing impairment or seeing a disability and may feel discouraged about going to the polls to vote. Can you give some uh, guidance and encouragement for those people to, to, um, to go and still vote and seek the proper uh, assistance? Yes, uh, in each voting precinct, there is a, a uh, disabled voting booth for those who are blind, who have problems hearing, um, that allows you to, uh, that, that provides equipment for uh, hearing the information that's on the ballot and a uh, device that is used to actually uh, uh, make your voter that you can use the press to make your voter selections or if you have uh, a device that you bring with you you can actually input that device into the the equipment that's available at that voting booth and mark the ballots so yes there is uh, accommodations for those people that have disability hearing and 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 who are blind and other types of disabilities. Do you recommend that they go to early voting versus the November 3rd, or you anticipate there's going to be lots of lines and long waiting? Um, and are there better times of the day from your experience, Brother Michael, that persons who are, who are flexible, who are not currently working, who have flexibility, are there times of the day that I know on the 12th, it's probably gonna be packed all day long, but are there times of the day or the week that you would suggest that our seniors 
and persons who have some physical disabilities or hearing impaired might um, find that they will not have as long of a wait. And I know we, we never know. Right, and there, we are anticipating a, a huge turnout. And that's why, for instance, in the cab, the precincts will be open every day from the 12th to the 30th. But uh, usually the heaviest activity occurs during the last week and during the last days of early voting because everybody is trying to get in and, and get their early vote in. And also, I would suggest that you come after the work crowd goes to work, which is say from 10 to 2 or 3, and, and vote if you're going to early vote. Okay. Uh, and usually on, on we anticipate having uh, a, a, a significant amount of people voting. So I, I would think that all day the, the polls are going to be pretty busy. But uh, we can accommodate the hearing impaired and those who are blind at any time. Good. I know we had a person who asked the question earlier this week that if they do early vote will, or absentee ballot, will they be able to go to my voter page, as Sister Marlene, you talked about, will they be able to go, will they be able to see that their vote was counted? Will it, will it just show that they voted or will they know that it got counted? Or is that, is that you know, the same? Uh, well, my voter page will show that you did absentee vote. And actually, when you early vote, it's considered absentee voting. Uh, you can check the status of uh, your absentee ballot on my voter, voter page, as well as the um, Georgia uh, voter tracking page, which we, which we identified last week. So I received my absentee ballot. I okay. have it here, but I think I want to go and try to vote early. What do I need to do with this envelope and what I have here? And then I was going to open this envelope so that you or Sister Marlene can walk us through what do we do with all of these? It's got lots of pieces of paper in here and which envelope do I keep and which one do I throw out? Do you think we could do a quick demonstration so folks would know what to do? Um, but what do I do with this if I decide to early vote? If, like, get with me? Yes. If you decide to early vote, bring your absentee ballot to the precinct yes. and turn it in. If you decide to, to, to vote on election day and you applied for an absentee ballot and you want to vote in person, bring the ballot to the precinct. But if you don't bring it, then you will sign an affidavit that says that you won't use that ballot and you will be able to vote. Yeah, so please make sure you bring it. If not, then you hold up the line. It's going to be very difficult. And I was told that some people, they they think because they're not going to use the absentee ballot and they're going in person that they can actually destroy it. No, you still have to keep it and bring it in. Is that correct, Brother Michael? Yes, that is. You, you should bring it in. Do but not rip it up. No. But if by chance you do or you lose it, again, the, uh, you can and we'll have to sign an affidavit saying that you will not use that ballot. But that's that's a long pro that's a long process. Yeah, if you don't have it, uh, and I it, I know in the cab, and I'm sure in other voting areas, uh, uh, counties, uh, when it indicates when when they do a search on your not on your name, and it shows that you have an absentee ballot. Uh, then you will be directed to a 
poll official who would then have to call the voter registration office and they will make they will check to see whether or not you have voted and and then they will approve uh, they will determine whether or not you can vote via machine at that time. So yes, it, it, it means that you have to get out of line and you have to wait until uh, they've made that contact and determine whether or not you are actually eligible to vote. Okay, so technically I have a couple of choices here. So I am, I'm going to be your, um, you know, your, your person that just isn't sure what I wanna do. I've opened up my absentee ballot. I have all of this information. It's what you showed us, right, Sister Marlene? It's what you showed us. It's a lot of information here. I'm gonna fill it out just in case I need to mail it. Now, I have several envelopes here. Official absentee ballot, ballot must be enclosed. Then I have this other envelope that's here. Am I, and then I have these instructions. So, so what is most important that I do with all of this, in, this information? And something back here says, Mark, I have to sign it. And then if I am being assisted by someone, they have to sign it. So my first thing is fill this out, whether I'm going to the polls or not, if I'm taking it with me, already have it filled out. Yes. I, I you do that and make sure, as uh, Sister Mangum indicated, that you you blacken out the entire circle and try to stay within the circle. Okay, so we have some circles close up here, and you need to make sure. And it says that you have to use a black or a blue. Right. No. No red. Okay. Right. So we got to use the black or the blue, and we have to fill in the circles. And then we had some referendums and I'm going to see, we have a, we might have a few extra minutes if brother Tony could see if he finds that slide that sister uh, representative Karen Bennett had last week. So we can remind people that these referendums are on here. So this is a lot to fill in. And there's some places where there's just an in incumbent sister Marlene. It's so that that means that there's no one running against them. Is that what the incumbent means? Yes, if there's no um, opposition, yes. So that person is in office already without opposition. Okay, so then you can you can vote. And then when they have and they say that it's a write-in, is that means I can write something in there or do I just vote for what's there? What does write-in mean? People are gonna see that word on each. Well, if they have another candidate, they can write another name in. So people have that option as well. Okay, and then um, it's real important that we know what these constitutional amendments mean. So we know whether we're voting yes or no for those in advance. And is there some information, are there some sites, um, Sister Marlene, that people can go to, to, to learn a little bit about what those referendums and constitutional amendments, I used to go to the League of Women Voters, and are there some places they can get that information? They could They could do that. They can also go on a party's website to find out. And I believe the Secretary of State might have that information as well. I usually just go to the party's website. Okay. But the party that I'm a member of, I go to that website. And yes, the, the League of Women Voters. Okay, so I am going to take this. I am going to stick it in this envelope that says, my official absentee ballot, correct? Yes. Filled yes. it out. I'm going to put it in. And make sure you put all the pages that you have that you filled out. Don't leave any out. Okay, but I don't have to put the instruction page in, right? I don't need that one. No. Okay, so we leave those of us who are doing absentee, we leave the instruction page and we make sure that we filled it out. And let me make sure, is there a place? I, I There's probably a place I have to sign on here. Is there a place? That no, I, I think it's on the envelope. It's on the envelope. So there's, right. so once again, this goes into this envelope. And then I have to put this in the mailing envelope, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Don't mail it without putting the ballot in the envelope, correct? Right. That's correct. And 
Each ballot is for one person. So if you have three, four people in your home that are um, voting by absentee ballot, they still have to use their own envelope envelopes to um, seal off and mail off. They cannot share. Okay, so if my husband has an absentee ballot, he has to mail his own. They That's just correct. Postage. And you got to put a stamp on it. Is that correct? Yes. Even if you're taking it to one of the boxes, the voting boxes, do you need a stamp? No, not for the not for the drop boxes, but U.S. Um, postal, yes, you do. Okay. So now on the back where it says sign here or a mark of elector, the oath of the elector, is this where I have to sign? Yeah, it's extremely important. Sign. Okay. And it also says the oath of the person assisting. So this little box is only if I was disabled or couldn't do the signature myself, could not see, the person who assisted me would have to sign here. Yeah, who assisted you in voting or going through the entire process. And it says the elector is unable to read English and that might've been why they got assistance so that that person checks off there or they right. receive assistance due to physical disability. Since I don't yeah. need that assistance, I just signed here. I seal this. I put postage if I'm mailing it. I should put my return address in the return address spot. Yes. And that should be the address that is registered with the voting, not if I'm staying with my sister or somewhere else, I put the address that's registered. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then I, now I'm ready to vote, but I think I want to now go in and do it in person. I'm not sure if I trust whether this is going to get there. I filled it out. I've sealed it. I have it ready. And now on, I'm not going to go on the 12th, but on the 13th or 14th at um, 11 a.m., or 2.30 when the lunch crowd isn't there, I want to show up, Brother Michael, and you're saying, I carry this with me. That's correct. And do I stand in line, or do I tell them I need them to make that call or wherever they have to do? If, if you bring the ballot in, there's no call that has to be made. You will actually just go through the, whole, the process of uh, uh, checking in and getting your voting card and voting at the machine. All right, and then I tell them that I'm going to, in lieu of using this, I want to go to the machine. Yeah, you turn that in when you check in. Okay, and do they discard it so they make sure there's no double voting? Yes, it is. They okay. still, and they and they return it to the voter registration office. Okay, all right. So I hope that has been helpful. I have a question here. Can the absentee ballot be hand delivered to the address on the front of the outer envelope? If so, who would I deliver it to? So the front of the outside of my envelope, since I'm in DeKalb County, says the Memorial Drive, um, that's the headquarters Board of Elections for DeKalb. So it could be, I could choose to just take this to this location and I might just feel comfortable. We did that for the primary that it's now there. Can I do that during early voting? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So that should, that answers that question. Um, and I think brother Tony had the referendum and bills. And as we, we get ready to wrap up and Reverend Sneed is gonna close us out. If you have that brother uh, Tony, if you put that up and I wanna give kudos, this is our third of our series and brother Tony Knight, you don't get to see him but we couldn't have done this without him. He's managing all the technology. Yes, we give kudos and shout outs to him. So Sister Marlene, will you just say a little bit about these referendums and just um, he'll share that. And so we can make sure this is important. The national election is important, but everybody needs to know that things that impact Georgia are, they always say local politics starts right here at home. So uh, Sister Marlene, just fill us in on a couple of these. And okay, so um, obviously I'm not as well versed as, as Sister Bennett, but I will just give you an overview. So in the state of Georgia, as I stated before, so let's talk about the statewide referendums and um, amendments. So there's going to be two amendments. So one is House Resolution 164, and then the other one is House Resolution um, 1023. 
And then there's Georgia um, House Bill 344. So that's um, a referendum. So if we can go back, so there will be three and you vote yes or no. And then depending on the county that you live in, there's going to be um, some additional referendums. So for example, in Gwinnett County, there's going to be the SPLOS and also the transit referendum. So if we can go to um, referendum um, 1023. Um, so this is to help, um, so it has a, the house, the number of the refer of the amendment and then below that will be a summary of the resolution. So this will be an amendment to the constitution as to, to provide that the people of the state may petition the, like the court to declare relief from certain acts of the state of certain local governments or officers. So to surmise this, so this is basically saying that um, the, it has to do with the court and with certain acts that the courts can do and they cannot do. And as far as immunity from a person, lawful authority, and maybe the attorney that's here. I know, I know how I'm voted for voting for this because it was explained to me thoroughly. But is Sister Gina still on the on the Zoom session? Yeah, I I, I think that uh, Representative Bennett indicated that this allows uh, citizens to sue. Uh, officers and employees of the state uh, for whatever they might do to harm you. Right, and and right now that's not that that's not the case. Right. Mm -hmm. And our state rep um, representative, the Black Legislative, the Georgia Black Legislative Caucus is in their conference this week. Uh, join them tomorrow online, um, and it's you can do that free the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. And I believe Sister Marlene and Brother Michael, she shared that the Black Legislative Caucus is voting yes for all yes, of the preferences mm -hmm. So we can't tell you how to vote, but we want you to know that she had um, two bills in this PowerPoint and that's, these are the two they are supporting. So right, so these, um, once again, and that's statewide. So these are two, the two amendments and the next one will be, um, Resolution 164, so dedication of revenues um, derived from fees or taxes to the public purpose. And this was some another one that um, she said the caucus is saying yes to. Yeah, and, and what this one involves is that uh, you are paying taxes for specific purposes. Like for instance, when you buy new tires, you pay a fee to, to to dispose of your tires. Well, that money was being used for other purposes. With this, that money will only be used for the purpose that it was approved for. for right. Mm -hmm. to, to avoid the shortfall in um, having, well, having money used for something that shouldn't, it should not be used for, and you have no control over that. Well, I wanna thank you as we prepare to wrap up. There has been lots of valuable information I want to thank our audience, whether it was Facebook Live or on our New Bethel AME Church media page. I want to thank you for joining in. Continue to ask your questions. If you're a member of New Bethel, you can send those questions and we will continue to answer those questions for you. I want to thank all the panelists we have had for our three weeks of voter suppression, um, uh, voter empowerment workshops. This is a part of the AME Church, African Methodist Episcopal Connectional Church Operation Voter Turnout. And the lay organization and the Social Action Commission has worked collectively together, that's what collectively means, to make sure that you receive this information. We will still be here throughout this process if you have questions. And to all of our particular members and our community, if you need a ride to the poll, let us know. We are trying to coordinate. Sister Marlene knows where there are, there are other groups and organizations that is working to get people to the polls. We hope that uh, through our ministries at our church, we may be able to help to get persons to the polls. There is absolutely no reason not to vote. So my last remarks will be this. It's going to be a quote from um, our late Congressman John Lewis, and then Reverend Sneed will close us out formally. 
Congressman John Lewis said, the right to vote is precious and almost sacred. The vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have. And I say, use it, use it. Everyone vote, vote like it's the last thing you will get to do in your lifetime because our ancestors died so that we could vote. Reverend Sneed. Thank you so much. Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Dear God, we are in need of your peace and truth to soothe our hearts and spirits right now. We need to be reminded of your constant love, healing, and grace. There are some people who are worried right now, but in your word, it says, be anxious for nothing but everything in prayer and supplication. Relieve their anxieties by helping them to focus on your will. Lord, go before us and level down mountains. I pray that you may scatter any plans by the adversary to disrupt the election process. Lord, protect the candidates, the leaders, the people, the workers, those who are going to the voting polling sites to exercise their rights and duties to cast their ballots. Let all the polling stations be safe. Let every voting be a record of overwhelming experience that has never been seen before. Let us be in corporate prayer for one another. We rely on your peace. Glorious Father, let your will be done during this election season. And we'll be so careful to lift up this closing prayer in the matchless name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 And good night, everyone. And we invite you to join New Bethel AME Church during our services at 745 and 11 o'clock each and every Sunday and our Bible studies at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. So we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. Go vote. What do you want to say, team? Go vote. Go. Go. And no before you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank yes. you to our pastor. in this country again. We are witnessing a tidal wave of voter suppression around the country. If you look at Alabama, Arkansas, North Carolina, and Georgia, which is becoming ground zero. Georgia's tight race for governor is getting national attention. Brian Kemp is not only the Republican gubernatorial nominee, he's Georgia's Secretary of State. Stacey Abrams looking to make history by becoming the nation's first female African-American governor. The Democrats are working hard, registering all these minority voters. Civil rights leaders say Kemp is illegally removing people from Georgia's voters' list. The purges, they've been going on for over a century. My girl well, wanted to vote, and they were trying yeah. to keep her from voting. The lines was crazy everywhere. I tried contacting Georgia Elections Board. My vote would not be counted. I'm six, and for the first time, I did not get a chance to vote. We are not going to let them take from us what our grandparents and parents fought to give us in the first place. The coronavirus pandemic is creating concerns ahead of the 2020 election. We are here to resist an ID law that is undemocratic. On my mother's dying bed at 92 years old, former sharecropper, her last words were do not let them take our votes away from us. Georgia's